There are tons of reasons to get a bicycle. There's commuting, exercise, and just for fun, to name a few. But electric bicycles, or e-bikes, build on top of the benefits that traditional bikes can offer cyclists. In this video, we'll talk about some of the pros and cons of owning an e-bike as compared to their non-powered counterparts. Just like electric cars, electric bikes are an eco-friendly alternative for transportation. They're great for both short and long commutes, either to work, school, or for running errands. And because they don't rely on just muscle power alone, you can go longer distances than traditional bikes. And the more you can replace a trip that would take place in a car or some other gas-powered vehicle with a trip on an e-bike, the more you can help reduce emissions and keep the planet healthy. And speaking of pollution, e-bikes also also offer many of the same benefits that motorcycles or motorized bikes can offer, but without the excessive noise pollution. Many people who consider getting into the cycling lifestyle hesitate from the fear of not being athletic enough. But an e-bike helps provide these people with a good starting point. You can push yourself as hard or as easy as you want. Unlike traditional bikes that rely solely on pedal power, e-bikes have a motor, and that can be used to either assist your pedaling or eliminate the need to pedal altogether. This way, you don't have to worry about showing up to work or school looking like you just ran 5K at the gym, all tired and sweaty and gross. And over time, you'll become a better rider as you rely less and less on the battery-assisted motor and more on your own legs and feet. The EB12 electric road bike here is perfect for both beginners and expert riders alike, as it's designed with a similar look and feel to something like a Fixie or a diamond frame road bike. And if you live in an area with lots of traffic, an e-bike could get you where you're going faster than even a car. With an e-bike, you can easily ride to the side of a traffic jam or even take shortcuts. E-bikes can even shorten trips that would have taken longer if you had taken a traditional bike. That's because you can cycle for much longer distances on an e-bike than you would on a traditional bike while using the same amount of pedal energy. And say goodbye to walking your e-bike up steep inclines. The motor on an e-bike boosts your torque when you pedal. But not only that, the throttle also lets you ride the bike similar to a scooter, which means you don't even have to pedal. You can typically carry more weight on an e-bike than you would on a traditional bike because they're much sturdy. If you carry hefty luggage with you while you travel, like a backpack with tons of textbooks, you can get an e-bike with a more robust frame, thick wheels, and a sizable chassis. And the bike won't buckle under the combined weight of you and your luggage. And it doesn't get any more rugged than our EB8, the fat tire all-terrain e-mountain bike. And the additional power that comes with e-bikes often lets you explore places otherwise inaccessible to traditional bikes, especially when you cycle off-road. An e-bike can venture deep into trails and deliver additional torque to the wheels when you pedal to let you traverse terrain previously unconquerable by traditional bikes. A great example of this is here at the Swagtron office. We love to take the EB-8 out to the beach and ride through the sand like it's nothing. Not something you could usually do on a traditional bike. If you use public transportation, you probably know it can be pretty stressful. You can use a bike for both short and relatively long trips without having to worry about the inconvenience of public transportation. Most notably, you can commute on your own time instead of following preset bus or train routes. And most of our e-bikes here at Swagtron have features that help enhance portability. Our foldable e-bikes range from the trailblazing rugged EB8 you saw earlier to the more campus-friendly EB7 plus. So you can ride to the train or the bus station and with enough available space, fold up your e-bike and keep it right next to you. And if you want to go riding around a park that's somewhat far away, you can also fold up your e-bike, throw it in your trunk, and pull it out when you are ready to roll. Even some of our full-size non-folding e-bikes, like the EB12 earlier, have quick-release front wheels, so they can fit into your car or for more compatibility with certain types of bike racks. 
E-bikes are much cheaper to buy and maintain than cars or motorcycles that offer the same level of utility. Furthermore, you don't need to pay to learn how to use an e-bike, nor do you have to pay for insurance or registration on them. Although laws do vary by state and country, so make sure to check those before you ride. Adding an e-bike to your commuting options also reduces the amount you have to use your car. So there's less wear and tear in the car and a lot less gas money coming out of your pocket. And many trips in America are no longer than three miles, a range e-bikes can cover with ease. E-bikes can also provide many of the joys of cycling, including enjoying some personal time to reflect as you commute or take a leisurely ride. And who doesn't remember the joy of riding your first bike? E-bikes build on top of that with the throttle mode as it is so much more fun than just traditional pedaling. And a little bit of exercise and a bit of fun in the morning can boost your mood throughout your whole day. Now, this wouldn't be a fair list if we didn't also mention some of the things people consider cons when it comes to e-bikes. And these are important to know if you want to make an informed decision. For one, e-bikes are more expensive to buy and maintain than traditional bikes. For example, you may need to replace batteries or other electric components from time to time. But this is a small price to pay when you're not paying for the upkeep of a traditional car, truck, or motorcycle. <laughs> The additional electronic components and sturdier builds of many e-bikes do make them comparatively heavier than traditional bikes. However, many are relatively light and built on aluminum frames. As we mentioned before, Swagtron carries many e-bikes that are foldable and more portable compared to classic looking e-bikes. <laughs> many regions, the rules for riding an e-bike on the road is kind of a gray area. E-bike classifications tend to vary across individual states and countries, and the laws do change sometimes. For example, at the time of recording this video, all of our e-bikes that we sell fall under the class two classification of e-bikes. So basically you can ride them on any path a regular bike is allowed. However, laws in your local jurisdiction may be different, and by the time you see this video, the laws could have changed. So it's always a good idea idea to check your local laws and guidelines for details on where you're allowed to ride your bike. An e-bike is practical only if you have reasonably easy access to a charging port. You always have to keep an eye on the battery level to avoid the inconvenience that comes when it runs out. But the good news is many of Swagtron's e-bikes have removable or hot swappable batteries. So if you wanna leave the e-bike chained up outside while you pull the battery out to take it up to your apartment to charge it, you totally can. And if you're really worried about running out of battery, we do sell extra batteries for these e-bikes. So if you want, you can even bring an extra battery with you for even more charge. And when you're really in a pinch, you can always extend your battery life by switching riding modes from all throttle to pedal only, or to something in between with pedal assist. Doing so gives you more range and more control about how much you rely on your battery. And if you do completely run out of battery, e-bikes can also be ridden just like regular bikes with no power whatsoever. And many Swagtron e-bikes come with multiple gears to help you have a smooth ride even without any electrical energy. And that concludes our list. So what do you think? I'm definitely in the camp of e-bike pros outweigh the cons, but let us know what you think in the comments down below. And if you are ready for an e-bike, but are a little overwhelmed with all the choices, check out some of our other videos on this channel that can help you decide which e-bike is the best fit for you. If you liked this video, hit that thumbs up button. It helps us out a lot. And if you wanna see more videos like this in the future, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.